Part of the reason that you've been so bullish on equities for many years at this point is the interest rate environment. Yeah. You've looked at interest rates and said interest rates are gravity on stock prices, and when interest rates are so low, stock prices inevitably are going to climb. There's been this really weird thing that's been happening in the markets where all of a sudden good news that we got from a good jobs report made people start to worry that interest rates were going to climb and that the Fed was going to raise rates more than anticipated. Uh, people got really nervous around that, and you can still see it. Every time we get up on the 10-year back towards 3%, it, it, it gives investors, or at least traders, I should say, some concerns about what's happening. How, how do you kind of gauge Becky, all a bond, that? if you buy a 30-year government bond, it has a whole bunch of coupons attached. In the old days, it does now. It's electronic. But it has a whole bunch of coupons. And the coupon says 3% or whatever it may say. And you know that's what you're going to get between now and 30 years from now, and then they're going to give you the money back. What is a stock? A stock is a, a, the same sort of thing. It has a bunch of coupons. It's just they haven't printed the numbers on them yet. And it's your job as an investor to print those numbers on. If those numbers say 10%, and most American businesses earn over 10% on tangible equity, if they say 10%, that bond is worth a hell of a lot more money than a bond that says 3% on it. But if that government bond goes to 10%, it changes the value of this equity bond that, in effect, you're buying. You are buying when you buy it. an interest in General Motors or Berkshire Hathaway or anything. You are buying something that, over time, is going to return cash to you. Maybe a long time in terms of Berkshire, but it'll be bigger numbers. And those are the coupons, and it's up to you, your job as an investor to decide what you think those coupons will be, because that's what you're buying, and you're buying the discounted value. Of it. Uh, and the higher the yardstick goes, and the yardstick is government bonds, the less attractive these other bonds look. That, and, and that's just fundamental economics. So in 1982 or three, when the long government bond got to 15 percent, a company that was earning 15 percent on equity was, was no, worth no more than book value under those circumstances. Because you could buy a 30-year strip of bonds and guarantee yourself for 15 percent a year. And a business that earned 12 percent was a subpar business then. But a business that earns 12 percent when the government bond is 3 percent is one hell of a business now, and that's why they sell for very fancy prices. So 3% is a long way from 15% that Absolutely. you were just talking about. But, but I watched it go from 3 to 15, though, too. Right. Is there an inflection point on that way? Because people think, oh, my gosh, we've gone from 2.4% to 2.9%, that and that's much. a big difference. That's not so much. Historically speaking, that's still the way we should be measuring these things, not on, the, not on the absolute movement or the percentage gain movement over time. 2.4 to 2.9 is nothing if you're comparing it with businesses that earn 12% on equity and reinvest. And the S&P, you can just look at the figures for decades, has earned on tangible equity, it's earned a lot more than that. And it translates into more higher prices than it should. Is there a tipping point along the way, or is it a gradual decline in, in terms Nobody of Nobody knows. Yeah. But it's, it is gravity. I mean, if, if you told me interest rates were going to be 15% next year on long bonds, you know, and, uh, I'm... I would, there's a lot of equities I wouldn't want to own now, and I would, I would, I would buy a lot of governments at 15, and I kind of wish I had it in 1982, but I didn't. <laughs> if I told you that the long bond was going to trade at 4.5 to 5% next year. It makes a difference. But it's been idiotic to own long bonds. Uh, during the last, you know, I talk about this in the report in terms of our, it's just been idiotic. And big public pension funds and all that, they sat there and they owned bonds. Now, they may have bought them on a 4 or 5% basis, but if they go to a 3% basis, they're selling way above par. The, 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 uh, the way people think about it is uh, that they do some very silly things. I mean, you lay this out in, in the annual report, but a lot of investors are told, retail investors are told, that they should have a certain percent of their portfolio in bonds. Maybe they're told 60-40, maybe they're told 70-30 stocks to bonds. Uh, that's something that you should do, and that's the safe way yeah. of doing it. What are well, they missing? Some people should not own stocks at all because they just get too upset with price fluctuations. If you're going to do dumb things because your stock a stock goes down, you shouldn't own a stock at all. <laughs> no, I mean, what, what are dumb things? Selling a stock? Yeah, it goes selling down? a stock because it goes down. I mean, if, if, if you know, if if. If you buy your house at twenty thousand dollars and somebody comes along the next day and says, "I'll pay you fifteen, you don't sell it because the quote's fifteen. <laughs> you look at the house or whatever it may be. It, it, but 
Some people are not actually emotionally or psychologically fit to own stocks, but I think there are more of them would be if you get educated on what you're really buying, which is part of a business. And the longer you hold stocks, the less risky they become, whereas the longer the maturity of a bond, the more risky it becomes. Do you feel like that's a message that is getting through to people? It's one that you repeat again and again. And I, I always feel like I was watching a lot of the Olympics. And I felt like what they do in the Olympics is so easy. These guys sailing through the air and doing massive spins on the ice and turns. And then I read your annual letter and I think, oh, it's really easy to invest. And then I walk away and realize it's not that easy. It's not easy psychologically for many people. But I've been, I've been teaching since I was 21. I taught my first class on investments. And I had a class last week with, with uh, 11 schools, 220 students. And, and some of them get it and some of them don't. Uh, people would rather gamble. I mean, the idea that you can double your money in six months, that, that's just going to, it's why people go to the races, why they go to Vegas, you know, whatever it may be. They, they, they even know the odds are against them and they still do it. I mean, it's a strong instinct to want to get rich fast and I don't know how to do it. 